if you're listening carefully, you may be able to hear the motorcycles going by. They, our windows are open, so the street traffic is really loud. Well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and go. I know that the tower bell will ring shortly. I wanna welcome everyone to live stream worship at St. James Episcopal Church in Skinny Atlas, New York. We are gathering with people on both Facebook and Zoom, and I have an assistant tonight who will be doing the readings. And if anyone would like to help with leading worship, uh, you can join us on, you can let me know any week, and I will send you a bulletin and uh, give you readings or prayers or something like that. My, did I already say my assistant tonight is Marie Hughes? There is a bulletin for this on stjamesscan.org, our website, and there is also, I will give you the page numbers for the prayer book. If you happen to have a prayer book at home, um, you can actually use that. So we begin this evening on page 115 of the Book of Common Prayer. We are doing uh, the evening prayer worship service. Yours is the day, O God, yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Dear friends, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. And I'm gonna give you just a moment to think about any time in the day when you perhaps uh, felt farthest from God or recognized that you had gone off in some direction that was not uh, a positive direction for you, something that was healthy or helpful. And I would encourage you simply to offer that into God's hands and then we will say together the confession. Most merciful God, be on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. And if you turn now, those of you who have prayer books, turn to page 117. We will say together the invitatory. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And turning to page 118, we will say together the Phos Hilaron, O Gracious Light. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven. O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. I remind you that the readings that we do on Wednesday evening are not actually the readings that are appointed for evening prayer for the daily office. I prefer to use the readings that are appointed for the Eucharist because they typically have um, a thread of a theme or several themes that run through them. The one tonight is not very happy. Uh, <laughs> Marie. Is Marie Hughes is going to read for us, and uh, 
you you will hear she when I sent them to her she said oh these are harsh they, they're pretty harsh so uh, Marie if you would unmute yourself and lead us in Psalm 50 beginning at verse 7 which those of you who are using a prayer book you'll find on page 654 I will do the odd verses and ask you to all repeat uh, answer with the eight um, even verses thank you Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I will take no bull calf from your stalls, nor he goats out of your pens. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, the herds in their thousands upon the hills. I know every bird in the sky and the creatures of the fields are in my sight. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall honor me. Glory, Glory to, the to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from the book of Amos. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of heavenly forces, will be with you just as you have said. Hate evil, love good, and establish justice at the city gate. Perhaps the Lord of heavenly forces will be gracious to what is left of Joseph. I hate, I reject your festivals. I don't enjoy your joyous assemblies. If you bring me your entirely burned offerings and gifts of food, I won't be pleased. I won't even look at your offerings of well-fed animals. Take away the noise of your songs. I won't listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For those of you who are following in the prayer book, if you would turn to page 119, we will read together the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the book of Matthew. When Jesus arrived on the other side of the lake in the country of the Gadarenes, two men who were demon-possessed came from among the tombs to meet him. They were so violent that nobody could travel on that road. They cried out, What are you going to do with us, Son of God? Have you come to torture us before the time of judgment? Far off in the distance, a large herd of pigs was feeding. The demons pleaded with him, if you throw us out, send us into that herd of pigs. Then he said to the demons, go away. And they came out and went into the pigs. 
the whole herd rushed down the cliff into the lake and drowned. Those who tended the pigs ran into the city and told everything that had happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the whole city came out and met Jesus. When they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And for those using the prayer book, we, I would ask you to turn to page 120, and we will say together the Nunc de Bendis, which is the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So we have these harsh readings. Um, the first one, which is from Psalm 50, begins with God saying, O Israel, I will bear witness against you. Uh, and then at the end of, of that, in uh, verse 14, the psalmist says, Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, which gives the impression that maybe the sacrifices that are being offered are not, in fact, somehow pleasing to God. Which is the theme that actually gets picked up in the next reading from the prophet Amos. And... Um, Remember that the, the, um, the role of a prophet in history has been to speak the truth in some way that we, have, that we need to see, something that we're not seeing that we need to see. And uh, Amos says, again, to God's people, seek good and not evil that you may live, which gives the impression that maybe they've been seeking evil. Uh, but the really strong corrective that is in this small passage is um, Amos speaking for God, saying, I hate, I reject your festivals. I don't enjoy your joyous assemblies. I won't even look at your offerings. Take away the noise of your songs. And he finishes by saying, let justice roll down like waters. And then we have this passage from the Gospel of Matthew that is a story about two demon-possessed men who are so um, oppressed by whatever it is that's going on in their emotional and spiritual beings that they're violent. And they're so violent that, in fact, uh, there's a road in the area that people can't travel on. So we have two very oppressed men and in fact a community that is not free and uh, Jesus sends the demons out of the two men into the pigs the pigs drown and the people come out and they rejoice that these two men are healed and they're thankful to Jesus that uh, there's their community is now free oh no that's not actually what happens they don't rejoice at all they aren't happy that their community is free they, they tell Jesus they want him to go away. So I think when we're listening to these texts to try to understand what they have to say to us, it's really important to remember that they do, each one of them does actually speak to a very specific thing that is happening in history. They, there's something going on that is not right. And the psalmist, the prophet, and even Jesus are speaking about that. And speaking a word of corrective to come back to the way that is the way of God. The, the general principle that is worth our thinking about is that all through history, um, people, individuals, and communities tend to get off course. We, we, we begin maybe in a good place and then we head off in some direction and it's not right and there's a corrective that occurs and the swing comes back this way and heads off in that direction and some corrective has to happen and it comes back. And if you think about it, 
I mean, one really great example of that is the Reformation that took place in Europe. The, the church had gotten really way off course and was oppressing people and taking advantage of people and even the worship of God was no longer a holy offering to the Lord. So I think it's fair to ask ourselves, is there a chance that there is some way in which we are also off course and need a corrective to take place, whether it's in our church communities or whether it's in our nation as a whole. And I don't honestly think that we have to look very far to know that in fact there, there are some things that need attention. There are people who are um, struggling and crying out. There are systems and laws in our land that are not functioning for the best for everyone, particularly people at the margins. Um, I think there is, a, there is a portion of the Christian community that would say the pandemic is God's punishment. I don't for a moment believe that. I don't think that um, that God is out to get us in the things that happen um, necessarily in history, but God will certainly allow a moment like this to be an opportunity if we'll take it. And if we will use this time for reflection and for self-examination and for asking the Holy Spirit, is there something here that we need to see? Is there some change that we need to make? Is there a way in which we need to speak out or to assist some um, part of our, our nation or our communities to live a better life, for there to be justice, um, which is something justice and mercy are two of the characteristics that are absolutely the heart of God. I wanna to read to you um, a reflection by Karen Florentino that we have been, um, I'm sorry, by Arundhati Roy. We've been using it for the Friday um, discussion group that has been meeting. The discussion group has, is called um, Pilgrimage and Transformation. And the idea of it began with the desire to take advantage of this moment to really listen to what God might have to say to us, expecting that in the midst of it, God may lead us through a doorway into a better world. So I'm gonna read this reflection and um, just offer it to you as something to think about. What is this thing that has happened to us? It's a virus, yes. In and of itself, it holds no moral brief. But it is definitely more than a virus. It has made the mighty kneel and brought the world to a halt like nothing else could. Our minds are still racing back and forth, longing for a return to normality, trying to switch our future to our past trying to stitch our future to our past and refusing to acknowledge the rupture. But the rupture exists. And in the midst of this terrible despair, it offers us a chance to rethink the doomsday machine we have built for ourselves. Nothing could be worse than a return to normality. Historically, pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and imagine their world anew. This one is no different. This pandemic is a portal, a gateway between one world and the next. We can choose to walk through it, dragging the carcasses of our prejudice and hatred, our avarice, our data banks and dead ideas, our dead rivers and smoky skies behind us, or we can walk through lightly with little luggage, ready to imagine another world and ready to fight for it. So I, I would invite all of us just to hold the present um, kind of lightly and to ask the question, is there something here? Is there something 
in my life that maybe needs attention or adjustment or even letting go. One of the things that I think many of us have talked about is the idea that we were enamored of busyness and getting things done and and this time has certainly um, for many of us caused a kind of quiet that's almost uncomfortable ma making us look at ourselves and listen to ourselves and be with ourselves in a way that we never have um, perhaps in a long time so what is so here's the question for you to take into the into the rest of this night and maybe into tomorrow what is the gift in this what is the opening? What might God be inviting us to consider anew and take with us into the future? If you are using your prayer book, I would invite you to turn to page 120 and we will say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are going to enter into a time of prayer and for those of you who are with us on Facebook I want to invite you to type in uh, your prayer concerns that you would like to share with all of us names or something that you would like prayer for it takes a little while for the text to get from you to me and I would love to be able to read them out loud so if you um, would go ahead and and do, start to do that now. And those of you who are with me on Zoom, I'm gonna invite you in just a moment to unmute yourselves if you'd like to and just share things um, that you would like us to be praying for together. In the meantime, while you're thinking about that, uh, for those of you who have a prayer book, if you would turn to page 121, we will say the Lord's Prayer together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we are going to use um, intercessory prayers B, suffrages B, which I think is on page 122. Yes. And uh, for those of you who don't have a bulletin or a prayer book, the response is the same for each of the intercessions. It is, we entreat you, O Lord, that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of your saints and trusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. And I would invite uh, your intercessions now. 
I would like prayer for my nephew, Zach who has uh, been sick for almost two weeks and nobody can seem to figure out what's going on with him. Um, and also for Sister Anna Grace, uh, who had serious surgery today and has asked for prayers. For Zach and for Sister Anna Grace. We also pray for Charlotte Elias, who is 100 years old for healing, I think it says for healing. And we pray for um, Linda Herb's father who and Roy and his family. Are there other prayers? Can you, can you lean in, Jude? Yes, I, I would like to pray for those who have little income and food uh, around the world people everywhere who are particularly hard hit by this the our economic and health situation and are struggling for money and work and food i would invite you to are there other prayers Well, you can keep on typing, those of you on Facebook, and I'm going to continue on, and I'll look up every now and then and see if there's anything else. This is the prayer of the day from Sunday. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And a prayer for our nation. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble suspicions disappear and hatred cease that our divisions being healed may we may live in justice and peace you O god have bound us together in a common life help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for evening. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness, through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. And a prayer for mission. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And before, uh, oh, Barbara Wise will be 99 on July 6th on Monday. Oh, thank you, Mary. Uh, um, two quick announcements. One is that this coming Sunday, we are going to go to a summer schedule. We don't usually do that. We're, we're doing it this year because this technology that we're using has become um, kind of overwhelming and we we need to create a little bit of space for the staff 
So we will continue to live stream every Sunday and every Wednesday, just like this. Um, and actually, if you're on Zoom, it's the same uh, login and ID on Wednesday and Sunday morning at nine. So we'll be live streaming at nine. The good news is you can watch it anytime. So whatever uh, works for you, it will be recorded and uh, you'll be able to um, see it at your convenience. And um, this coming Sunday, and we're gonna, we're gonna alternate services over the course of the month. So one week it's gonna be from my living room, which happens to be this coming Sunday. One week it will be, uh, two, the next series of weeks it will be in the church as we have been doing and we'll have music and we'll alternate um, contemporary and traditional. And here's the big news. You are the first to hear it. Uh, we are clear and ready to begin outdoor worship, which we are going to do on July 12th. It's going to be very different from what we have typically done uh, other summers and we'll be sending out a ton of information about it and in fact I think we are going to produce a video that will kind of explain what the, what the protocol is. But we are going to give it a shot and see how it goes and um, so, that's so this coming Sunday July 5th is at 9 or whenever. Um, recorded on Facebook and on July 12th it will be at 9 recorded on Facebook and Zoom and then um, a an outdoor worship service at 1030. Lots more information about that coming. So if you would uh, join me for the general Thanksgiving if you have a prayer book you may look at page oh there is one more prayer request that was uh, Put in there by the sneaky guy that's sitting in my living room whose name happens to be Kip Kerper. Today's our wedding anniversary. Uh, 42. We're, we're, just, we're just babies. Uh, 42 years ago today. So if you would join, uh, join me for the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we your unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thanks for joining everybody. I'm going to um, turn off Facebook and if you're on Zoom and you want to hang around for a minute or two, we'll, uh, you can unmute yourselves and we'll just chat before we say goodnight. Goodnight everybody. Happy anniversary.